Hello, this is Myung-hak, and I'm going to talk about the tight PR security of double block hash tensor MAX. This is joint work with Sangwang and my advisor Juyang. Let's start with the introduction. Message authentication code, MAC, is a symmetric key algorithm that protects the integrity of the message. If Alice wants to send a message to Bob, and also wants to make sure that the message hasn't been modified, Alice and Bob first share the secret key K by a secure key exchange protocol. Before send the message, Alice computes the tag T by applying the MAC on the shared key K and the message M. Then she sends the message and tag pair to Bob. To ensure the integrity, Bob verifies the received tag by recomputing the tag value using his copy of the key. If there is an active attacker if and he inter intercepted the message and modified it, then the new tag may not match the original tag. So, Bob can notice that the message was not sent by Alice and reject the message. To capture this situation, a Mac should have unforgeability to be secure. If a Mac has unforgeability, it is infeasible to generate a new valid message and tag pair, even after looking at sufficient number of valid samples. We also use another security notion called PRF security. To be PRF secure, it should be infeasible to distinguish from a random variable input length function. Since we can prove that a secure variable input length PRF has also unforgeability, PRF security is a stronger security notion than unforgeability. Therefore, if we want to prove the security of a MAC algorithm, it is enough to prove that the algorithm is actually a secure PRF. To precisely formulate the PRF security of a function, we are going to introduce the distinguishing game. In this game, the adversary is interacting either with the real world and the ideal world. The real world comprises the MAC function, while the ideal world comprises a random variable input length function named f. The adversary tries to distinguish two worlds by making q oracle queries with length and most l blocks. At the end of game, the adversary should determine the interacting world from the transcript, which is the record of queries and the answers. The distinguishing advantage of the adversary is defined as the probability of correctly determining the interacting world minus 1 over 2. The 1 over 2 is come from the probability of waiting by simple random guessing. There are a lot of proposed Macs with security proof, but most of them only provide birthday bound security. However, in some cases, we need beyond birthday bound security. For example, in lightweight cryptography, we likely to use block ciphers of a smaller block size such as 64 bits or 80 bits. However, when we use these small block size, birthday bound security become insufficient. In the table, you can see that if we use 64-bit block ciphers, the number of allowed queries on ECBC is up to 2 to the 25, while the number of allowed queries on PMAC is 2 to the 18. These are too small to use in practice, so beyond birthday bound security is needed. Fortunately, there are some Macs provide VBB security. ZMac, ZMac Plus, HAT, and HAK are the Macs based on Trecoil block ciphers or IDR ciphers. They all have MB security where the N denotes the block size, but this high security could be achieved by using strong primitives. However, for the block cipher based Macs, it seems hard to achieve BBB security since 
any UHF than PRF style with MB2 internal state provides only birthday bound security. To settle this problem, there was an idea to use doubled state size, and later this idea is abstracted to double block hash length sum paradigm. Some ECBC, 3KF9, PMAC Plus, and LightMAC Plus are the max based on this idea, and their security has been proved up to 2 to the 2n over 3 queries. Now, let us see the constructions of double block hash and sum max briefly. Sum ECBC, which is the sum of two independent instances of ECBC, is proposed by Yasta at CTRSA 2010. As we know, it is the first proven BBB secure MAC algorithm. In the next year, Yasta proposed another BBB secure MAC called PMAC Plus. PMAC Plus is based on PMAC algorithm and it has merit on its performance since it is parallelizable and also rate to one algorithm. Later, there were studies to make efficient BBB secure max. Zhang et al. proposed 3KF9, which is the combination of 3GPP MAC and ECBC. 3KF9 is the only rate to one algorithm which provides BBB security without using any of field operation. Finally, Naito proposed LightMac Plus, which is variant of LightMac. LightMac Plus is not a rate one algorithm since it uses counter embedding on message, but it achieved message length independent security. Recall that all of double lock hashtags on Max are proven to have 2 and over 3 bit security. On the other side, Rorent et al. suggested generate attacks on all of these double block hash tensor of max with 2 to the 3 and over 4 queries. The core idea of the attack was to exploit the difference between XOR permutations, XOP, and the ideal 2 and to n bit function. In the following system of equation, let us assume that the hashed messages are collided if they have the same color. Then, all of the unknowns appear exactly twice and cancel out each other, so we can derive a new condition that sum of the tag values should equal to zero. This property is significant difference from the ideal function, so Generic attack could be done by making this specific form of hash collisions within 2 to the 3 and over 4 queries. Now, you can see that there exists a gap between the best known attacks and their provable security. Now, let us move on the contribution of our study. In this study, we proved 3 and over 4 bit security of all double block hash tensor on max, so close the gap between the generic attacks and probable security. Since we have unified security proof framework, one can identify the required properties of the underlying hash functions. You can see the simplified security bound in the table, and if we consider the maximum length of each message as a constant value, all double block hash tensor max are secure up to 2 to the 3n over 4 queries. Note that for PMAC plus and 3KF9, new bound does not always dominate the old bound, especially for the long messages. Here is the graph representing upper bounds on distinguishing advantage for PMAC and PMAC+. The left one is the graph for the 64-bit block size, and the right one is that for the 128-bit block size. As you can see in the graph, our new bound omlifts the security of PMAC+, for short messages. Let us introduce our brief overview of our security prover. 
And this is the main lemma of the H question technique. If the probability to have bad transcript is small, and the difference between the ideal world and the real world is negligible without having the bad transcript, H question lemma says that the distinguishing advantage is also negligible. I will not cover this pre precisely, but important point is we should define a proper, proper set of bad transcripts, then upper bound two values, epsilon bad and epsilon ratio. Also, the probability of getting a transcript in the real world is the most challenging one in the proof. Let us start to see the proof steps. For the first step, we represent the transcript by a graph. As you can see in the figure, each query, uv and t, is mapped into the edge which connects the vertices x and y. The vertex x represents the p of u, and the vertex y represents the q of v. Also, the edge have its label, t, to represent the x value of x and y. Since each query makes an affine equation between two variables t p of u and q of v, the transcript graph can be viewed as another representation of system of affine equations made by adversaries' queries. Note that since we target beyond birthday bound security, there exist hash collisions of messages, so the edges might be connected each other. The next step is to identify the bad graph. Some of the transcript graph might lead to a contradiction itself. If the graph contains a cycle, then the system of equations can be inconsistent. Here, we can see that the system is inconsistent if t is not equal to t prime. If the graph contains a path of even length whose tag sum is equal to zero, one will get the equality of two different unknown, like the q of v and q of v prime in this system of equation. But this leads contradiction because through permutations, different inputs should be mapped into different outputs. This type of the bad graph condition is sometimes called degeneracy. Also, although a cycle with degeneracy is not lead to contradiction, but to be simple, we still identify the, this as a kind of bad case. One can also note that the generic attack on the double block hash tensor max used length of four cycles. The third step is to upper bound the probability of obtaining bad graphs. Instead of finding a probability to have cycles or degeneracy, we define following five bad events. Bad one is the event to have length to cycle, and bad two or bad three are the events to have length to degeneracy. Bad four is the event to have one direction of length for degeneracy, and finally, Bad 5 is the event to have another direction of length for trail, not degeneracy. So, without bad 5, there cannot exist a length, a length 4 cycle, and also length 5 or longer trails. As a result, without the events bad 1 and bad 5, there cannot exist cycles, and without bad 2 to bad 5, there cannot exist even length paths with zero tech sum. So, after we find the prob probability to have these bad events, we can upper bound the value epsilon bad. The last remaining step is to upper bound the epsilon ratio. Here, we apply the patterns mirror theory which evaluates the number of solutions of affine systems, and this is identical to find the probability to get a transcript in the real world. However, we could not apply the pla plane mirror theory since 
the plain barrier theory is can be applied only when the maximum component size is bounded. However, in double lock block hash tensor, the expected maximum component size is too large, so the refinement of the mirror theory is required. Our refined mirror theory allows arbitrary component size, but the ratio of the number of connected edges to the number of all edges should be bounded. This is the brief history of the applications of Pattern's mirror theory. After the first version of the mirror theory suggested at 2010, many variants of the mirror theory have been proposed and also have been applied on various constructions. Here, we want to emphasize that this is the first refinement of mirror theory that allows a component of, of an arbitrary size and can be used to prove 3n over 4 bit security. Although this work is, there is a concurrent work done by Eshinja and Muridul Nandi. Finally, after applying H quotient lemma, we can obtain the bound of adversaries distinguishing advantage. Here are our two major results, and one is the security of double block hash tensor max with two independent universal hash functions f and g. The security of polymac and the sum ECBC can be obtained from this bound. Also, when f and g is not independent, like pmac plus or 3kf9, dedicated analysis is required. The most challenging one was the security of pmac plus, and here you can see the simplified result where the epsilon is the sum of all of non-dominating terms. For conclusion, we proved the tight security bound for double block hash tensor max, including polymac, some ECBC, 3KF9, PMAC plus, and LightMAC plus. All of them are PR secure up to 2 to the 3N over 4 queries. Also, all the security bounds are tight in terms of the threshold number of queries. And for the future works, it will be interesting to find the better security bounds considering the influence of message length L, especially for the PMAC plus and 3KF9, or find the tight security of key reduced variants of double block hash tensor max. Now this is the end of the presentation, and thank you for the listening.